Okay, today some new settings for Extrude Sketch. Twist and Scale. These are settings that you access once you've created and finished an Extrude Sketch. All right, so let's drag this Extrude Sketch over and let's make a simple box here, like a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter box. We'll keep it solid. And let's finish this sketch so we can get back out of it. And we ha already have it selected, so here are those menu settings on the right. Let's just get right into scale and twist. So scale comes up first. And you'll notice that scale is actually broken up into two settings, the top scale and the base scale. And what this actually means is that it is referring to the top of the sketch, which is the top, and the base or bottom of the sketch down here. So this is about scale. So this is not a measurement here when it says 100 because as you can see, we have measurements here of 20 millimeters and 20 millimeters. So consider the default setting of 100 as representing the normal size. Or if we were to think about this as a percentage, it would be 100%. So if I wanted to increase and double the scale of let's say the base, so we'll go down to here, and let's say I wanted to double the size of that base, I would just take this and slide it up all the way to 200 and that's the actual maximum I can do. Or I could just type in 200 there as well. Now you'll see what's happened here is we have that box now with the base that has been expanded or scaled up or larger, basically doubling that size that it was before and you have this awesome looking shape. Now I can do the same thing with the top scale. Again, I can make it larger and you can see what it's doing there or I can make it smaller and if I drop it to say 75 or type it in, enter, there. I basically have the top layer there or that top surface of my sketched object about 75% or three quarters of its original 20 by 20 millimeter size. So there it is, that's top scale and base scale. And already you're probably thinking about a lot of applications for this because this is something that you would have had to have done a lot of work to try to accomplish. But now with Extrude Sketch and just playing around with the top and base scales, you can create these rather unique looking shapes here. And this is just a simple box. All right, let's bring this back down to those original settings. So just a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter box. And let's look at twist. And don't forget, we actually have to select that sketched object to open up that side menu. So let's take a look at twist, this setting down here. Now, by default, it is set to zero, but this number here is about degrees. The amount or the number of degrees you are going to twist the top surface of this object in relation to the base surface of this object. And you can see that if I take the slider and I start to just move it to the right here, you can see that I'm just twisting that top. And the base is staying in place, but it's that top surface that is twisting around. And of course, you can always enter in that number. So I'm gonna enter in 45 degrees, something like that. Now you'll also notice that if I want it to twist the other direction, I'm just simply gonna take that slider and shift it the other way and I can twist it in the opposite direction. Or you'll notice here when it comes to the values, if I wanted a 45 degree twist going in the other direction, I would just add in a negative value there. So let's start taking a look at these other settings, starting with twist mode. Now by default, it is set to steps. And the concept here when we're talking about steps is very much the same as the steps that we see with other shape generators where we have stuff like beveled edges. You can break up that curved or beveled edge. Basically here, steps breaks up the transition between the positioning of the top and the bottom of your shape. So here I've twisted it 45 degrees and by default, you're gonna know it's already set to steps and the setting underneath it talks about the twist steps or the number of steps. And right now it is by default set to zero, meaning that they are not showing any transitional steps between the twisting of the top surface here, 45 degrees from the base surface here. And that makes more sense actually if I start showing you when I start adding in these steps. So if let's say I show and I select this field here or I use the slider, but let's set it to two. All right, 
Now that I've set it to two, you can kind of see now what has happened here. It is showing you now those intermediary steps between that base and that top surface there that has been twisted 45 degrees. And those two steps are showing you that transition between the position of the base and the top. Of course, if I select it and let's increase this, let's increase this to five. Now you can see I have five steps there showing that gradual twisting of that top surface. And the maximum number of steps you can show is 24. And it looks a little something like that. So that's steps. However, going back to twist mode, you can select smooth. And if I select smooth, it basically does away with the steps and basically just smooths out that transition. So it's one nice smooth looking curve. Now that 45 degree twist was accomplished within this 10 millimeter height along the Z axis here of my sketched object. But you're also gonna notice that we have the ability to adjust the height here using this slider. In fact, I can go a maximum of 100 millimeters, but if I just use the slider, you can kind of see what's gonna happen here. It just simply moves up that top surface and it doesn't change the twisting angle of it. It's still at that 45 degree twisted position from that base, but what it does do is it stretches out that curved edge that we have going on there on the sides. And like I said before, I can go a maximum of 100. Now, you might also be asking, well, can't I do the same thing here by just taking this grab point and extending it further? Yes, you can. And in fact, you can actually resize it this way as well. So if I wanted to go something like 120, you can see I can do that quite easily. And just a reminder, don't forget, we have just talked about top and base scale. So if I take something like the base scale setting, and let's say just drag this out some more here, you can see how that impacts the shape. Let's take the top, let's scale this down. And this is just the basics. Again, going back to Extrude Sketch and revisiting all the things that you can do in Extrude Sketch and then having the ability to twist it or scale it on the top or the bottom starts to open up a whole bunch of possibilities for you when it comes to design. For example, let's take another Extrude Sketch out and let's create, let's create another simple looking rectangular box here. Let's go with something like this. Perfect. And let's just select this entire shape. Double clicked on that. And I'm going to select all of these points and we're going to make them all break handles. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this one edge here and I'm going to double click it back so that it is to those straight edges. So double click like that. This bottom edge, same thing here. Let me just press shift and let me just drag this up like this. Double click there. All right, let's take a look at this shape. All right, next we're gonna select this and let's twist this 90 degrees, something like that. And let's just make sure we smooth this out. Looks great. All right, and let's change the height of this. Let's just double this up. So let's make this 20. All right, there it is. That's a nice looking shape. That's pretty cool. Now let's go back into the sketch. When I re-enter the sketch, notice that it goes back to the original shape that I started out with. So you're not going to see the twisted shape appear here. You're gonna go back to the original shape. And let's say I wanna change this. So right now it is a solid, but I can easily take this and go to stroke settings and I can turn the stroke path on. And by doing that, now I've created this hollowed shape here and let's finish the sketch. And when I go back here, you're gonna see that it is literally the same move, but it's now with this hollowed out shape. But it doesn't end there. Let's drag out another sketch and Let's just do something like this. Let's just a simple pattern like that. 
And in fact, we can do a second sketch. Let's just click on this to create a new shape. And let's do another shape. In fact, let's just copy this, paste it. Let's just drag it down over here. Let's do something like that. So here we've created four separate shapes within this one sketch. And if we exit out, finish the sketch there, you can see there we are, those four boxes. I can just resize this up like this. And then we can play around with this setting here. Let's play around with the base scale. Let's take this and let's just start to move this out like that and take a look what's happening there. Like this would have taken a while to do with the typical tools that we had before in Tinkercad, but now it's pretty fast. All right, but we're not done yet. Let's take this and let's twist it. So let's twist this the other direction. Let's say minus 45 degrees. Looks good. And again, I apologize. I am a fan of this smooth mode. So I'm gonna switch it over to smooth. Like again, I'm just doing these random shapes, but you might have something that might need some element like this or some element that is based off of these multiple shapes that I've created in the sketch. And then the ability to play around with the scale of the bottom or the top and then twisting them. In fact, let's go back into this. Let's just select this and open up that sketch. Again, back to those original shapes that we drew. And I'm going to get rid of these to here and I'm going to make these ones actual circles. So rather than playing around with the settings, I can just select this entire thing here like this and then double click it like that. And it goes to and toggles to those smooth curves and I can create my nice little circle like that. Same thing here. Let me select this shape and then double click, double click again. There we go. Looks fantastic. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play around with that stroke settings. Let's turn that stroke path setting on. I'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Select that. Stroke settings. Stroke path on. Finish sketch. All right. And there it is. Continue to make that. If I wanted to, let's twist this actually a full 360. We'll twist it the other way, 360 degrees. There it is. Now you'll see here that it's kind of flattened it out because it's only doing this within that established height that we set for this object, which was 62 millimeters. Maybe what we need to do here actually is make this taller to help stretch it out. And sure enough, when we do that, you can start to see here this shape. This is yet another great add-on to the extrude sketch feature. Yeah, have fun with this. Good luck and until next time, take care and we will see you on the next video.